Hi everyone, my name is Michael Liston. I'm an engineer at Lockheed Martin and a part-time graduate student at Drexel University studying under Dr. Kapil Dandekar. Um, today I will be presenting our work on uh, using entry-based exploration in cognitive radio networks um, using deep reinforcement learning for dynamic spectrum access. Uh, during this presentation I'll be introducing the problem um, summarizing our contributions to make it clear where uh, our work is being presented and previous work is being summarized. Um, I'll be going into background on that previous work, um, detailing our contributions, and wrapping up with uh, conclusion and questions. This material addresses the problem of spectrum scarcity. With many new innovations in the Internet of Things and new wireless devices being invented and deployed, more and more spectrum is being used. In addition to this, modern day communication systems uh, require an increased quality of service um, and the easiest way to achieve uh, increased throughput and lower latencies is by using more bandwidth. Uh, with a finite amount of spectrum to support these goals, uh, modern uh, research has looked into technologies such as uh, exploiting higher frequency bands um, with, with better hardware, um, what's known as millimeter wave, and also cognitive radio. Uh, cognitive radio is pretty much any radio system that can intelligently uh, access the spectrum uh, using uh, spectrum sensing. Uh, they're typically able to dynamically change radio parameters such as center frequency, bandwidth, uh, and power. Uh, and in this presentation, uh, we're going to be looking at using a, um, a cognitive radio to do cooperative uh, sharing with deep reinforcement learning. The key contributions of our work include uh, using an entry-based exploration technique uh, for training the multi-user dynamic spectrum access model, and this will be explained in more detail. Um, and we also use it in the online evaluation of the model um, as it tells you when you need to uh, uh, continue training. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we designed a full software-defined radio stack that supports uh, evaluating the trained dynamic spectrum access models uh, in its MAC layer. Um, and it also includes a, uh, a physical layer and network layer, and uh, we collected uh, over-the-air results of the trained model. So before I go into detail on the items listed on the previous slide, uh, I'd like to get into some background on deep reinforcement learning. So deep reinforcement learning is essentially a class of reinforcement learning algorithms that involves the use of a deep neural network. And probably the most popular algorithm in this class is deep Q learning. Uh, and that is Q-learning with a neural network approximation of the Q-function. Uh, in the diagram ab uh, above, the Q-function would be the uh, neural network, uh, shown in this, this second element in the flowchart. Um, and this function uh, takes in uh, a state, S, and returns to you an expected reward over each action, A. So the output of this would be fed into an action selection policy, which would uh, decide on which action to take and that action would uh, affect the environment in some way. And you'd get a reward uh, for that change and also a new state of the environment as prime. So uh, to train the neural network, um, it's done uh, uh, rec uh, with recursive updates via gradient descent, uh, where the targets of the neural network uh, for each training step are set to uh, what's to the right of the arrow shown uh, in the equation below. So. A very important problem in deep reinforcement learning is uh, the problem of uh, exploration versus exploitation. Um, so that's taken care of in the action selection policy. And uh, when the action selection policy decides to explore, it uh, neglects the output of the Q function and decides to act randomly in order to obtain new information about uh, taking different actions in different states. Um, when the action selection policy decides to exploit, it leverages the output of the Q function and says, I'm going to take the action of um, uh, whatever's going to give me the best expected reward. So this problem is usually um, solved with using something like an epsilon greedy um, uh, algorithm, which essentially uh, uh, introduces this parameter uh, epsilon, um, which is the probability of exploration, uh, and that value um, is set to decay over um, over time at an arbitrary rate. Um, so if you expect your uh, neural network to be trained in a thousand steps, 
then at step 1000, you would want epsilon to be very small. So exploration is key to finding an accurate Q function because uh, you want to uh, obtain as much information as possible about uh, each action in each state. With that background, we move into the problem formulation motivated by previous work where end users of a network operate in a TDMA, FDMA hybrid configuration. So at each time slot T, each user N has K frequency channels to transmit on or decide to not transmit at all uh, for that time slot. Uh, before making that action, A sub N of T, the user N uh, observes um, uh, X sub N of T, which essentially is a vector encoding of the previous action that that user took, the channel occupancy at the previous time, time step, and also the reward denoted R sub N of T. The rewards can take on values uh, either 0 or 1, where 0 represents an unsuccessful transmission um, or a decision to not transmit at all, and 1 represents a successful transmission. So the goal here is to uh, maximize each user's expected uh, total discounted reward, um, where the discount factor gamma uh, is a parameter um, chosen between 0 and 1, and it's used to uh, weight uh, rewards that are closer to the current time step uh, more heavily. So to the right here, I have a optimal scenario with um, two frequency channels and three users. Um, so ideally, when the model was fully trained, um, each user would have um, the same amount of uh, time to uh, transmit on average, um, and each user's throughput would then be uh, maximized. It's been shown that the optimal example shown on the previous slide uh, is achievable with deep Q-learning. And this is accomplished by training end users together on a central uh, server such that they can share experience. Another key aspect to this solution is using a recurrent neural network as the neural network approximation of the Q function. And this is important because um, each user's obs observation is stacked over multiple time steps so that the RNN can uh, look ahead in time and predict when users uh, are going to transmit and not transmit. Each user is encouraged to cooperate um, because the rewards are shared with uh, each of the users. So uh, a reward for one, for one is a reward for all. And training is done in simulation and then deployed to uh, the real online system or the real radios that are evaluating the models. Uh, exploration in this solution is done by balancing uh, epsilon greedy uh, with softmax, which is another um, uh, heuristical approach um, where uh, uh, epsilon has to decay over an arbitrary amount of time. And um, this solution also uh, lacks the ability to uh, detect when the model needs updating uh, when the spectrum changes. To build upon the previous solution, we consider moving away from the heuristic-based exploration technique and consider a more dynamic strategy. We propose using entry-based exploration in which we create a probability mass function uh, to assign a probability to each action A, uh, as shown in the first equation here. And once we have the probability mass function, we're able to compute an entropy um, uh, metric um, shown in the second equation. And we essentially use this entropy as the uh, probability that a random action is taken in the action selection policy. So the idea is that as the model is trained more um, and becomes more certain of which actions it thinks you should take, um, the entropy should go down as it's the uncertainty of the probability uh, distribution. On this slide, we show the entry-based exploration technique and training and compare its probability of exploration to the heuristic approach, which was epsilon greedy for this chart. We set a threshold to stop training so when the probability of exploration hit a value of 0.15, the model stopped training and we consider the model converged. So we're able to do that because the entropy-based exploration technique is dynamic, so it will keep training until it eventually reaches that point. You could also notice from this chart that the probability of exploration was significantly higher for uh, portions of the training duration uh, where the epsilon greedy probability of exploration was lower. This means that the action space was explored much more thoroughly under the entry-based exploration technique. In addition to the training ben benefits, the entropy is still able to be evaluated uh, in the real system um, using the Q function outputs. And this, will, uh, this can act as a signal to tell you that the environment has changed and more training is needed if we detect spikes 
uh, in entropy. Here we outline the implementation of our software defined radio stack, which we use to collect over the air results of our train uh, dynamic spectrum access model. So the radio stack consisted of a physical layer that we implemented using Liquid DSP, which is a uh, signal processing library implemented in C. Um, our MAC layer used TensorFlow to evaluate the dynamic spectrum access Q functions. And the network layer we implemented to support IP packets. We used a hub and spoke network topology so that we could uh, task the hub with sending acknowledgement transmissions back to each of the um, uh, spoke nodes. Those nodes were the ones that were evaluating the uh, trained dynamic spectrum access model. Using our software to find radio, we collected the over the air results shown here. The version of the problem that we were testing consisted of three users in the network and two frequency channels. The third frequency channel uh, you see in the spectrograms is dedicated to the hub for acknowledgement transmissions. We took the uh, dynamic spectrum access model trained in simulation and used it to control when each user transmitted. The spectrogram showing those transmissions is shown in the upper right uh, of this slide here. We also implemented uh, the Aloha Random Access MAC protocol to compare against, and the spectrogram showing those transmissions is shown on the bottom right. As you can see, the spectrogram for the uh, for the trained dynamic spectrum access model is much more organized and it results in uh, much better throughput and outperforms uh, for each user uh, when compared to the Aloha MAC protocol. In summary, we've shown that using entropy-based exploration for training this deep reinforcement learning problem uh, can be used to define better convergence criteria uh, and tell you when more training is needed. In addition, we showcased our software-defined radio stack um, that was used to measure over-the-air results for the trained dynamic spectrum access model. And our follow-on efforts include uh, developing a process for network nodes to update their queue functions um, via a protocol that sends model parameters out from the uh, central server that uh, trains the model. Uh, we'd also like to do training and evaluation uh, in emulated scenarios with a larger network. References. Thank you, and questions.